Well, hey, Church Online, so glad you're with us again today. Hey, what an incredible series we've been in called Soul Purpose, along with Surge Conference. It's been amazing. I want to dive right into the Word today. Um, but before I do, let me just recap where we've been. First of all, a couple of weeks ago, we talked about the purpose, the purpose to produce. That's what we're called to. We have a purpose. We have a destiny on our life to produce. We're not just here to grow. We're here to produce. And then we talked about the pathway to produce. It's not just through a, a factory system. It's organic. Discipleship is organic and producing is organic and we're all called to it. We're all called to discipleship. Um, in fact, we're not just, as I said, we're not just called to grow. We're called to produce. All the way back in Genesis chapter one, it says uh, God is saying to Adam and Eve when he created mankind, one of the first things he says to them, be fruitful and multiply. He didn't see, say be fruitful and grow. Be fruitful and be super spiritual. Be fruitful and be the superstar Christian. No. He said, be fruitful and multiply. Increase. Do something with your life. And then later on, we see in Matthew chapter 28, he calls the disciples and he says a similar thing. Jesus is talking to the disciples in Matthew chapter 28. Go and make disciples of all nations. Very similar to what he said all the way back in Genesis chapter 1. Be fruitful and multiply. Go and make disciples of all nations nations. And today I want to talk to you on the idea of multiplication, the topic of multiplication. I want to talk to you on the subject. If you're going to write a title down, if you're taking notes, you can write down the X factor, the X factor. And no, I'm not talking about the show with Simon Cowell on it, X factor. I'm talking about the X factor, the component. Um, the, an X factor is a component that gives you the edge. If, if a car has the X factor, it's got a little something more to it. It's got a little something more powerful. It's got the edge. It's got the leading edge. And I want to tell you today that as believers, we can have the X factor in our life. The multiplication factor. There's a factor we need in order for us to multiply. If we're going to be called to multiply, not just grow, then we need to have the X factor. See, addition, addition in, in Christianity is, is, is more like for example, growing the church, more people just coming, come, you know, we're, we're going to add to the church. We're going to add numbers to the church, but multiplication is more, looks more like going addition is coming. Come, come to us. Uh, multiplication is going. It's, it's the sending out uh, or addition might look like you growing, you personally growing and addition is great. And you growing is great, but multiplication looks like you pouring into somebody, you taking what God has done in you and pouring into somebody because it creates multiplication. Now I wasn't very good at multiplication. I wasn't very good at mathematics, period, in school. But multiplication, I had such a hard time. I literally have nightmares. And I still, if, if I think about it hard enough, I just remember like my mom trying so hard at home to get me to understand multiplication. I don't know what it was about multiplication. It, it was like the you just had to memorize it. And I wasn't ever great at that. And I remember her putting the multiplication, um, the, the different ones I had to memorize on our window at home on flashcards. And she would make me sit and, uh, and read them and recite them and then close my eyes. And then she would ask me questions. And I just I mean, I, I just felt like it was torture. If you ever want to torture me, if you ever want to get something out of me, make me do multiplication. That's what, that was a tough thing for me. But here's the deal. This is what Christianity is about. Not mathematics, but it is about multiplication. We're not just called here uh, to raise our hand and say yes to Jesus. And salvation is so important in our life. But when we give our life to Jesus, what we're saying is we're giving our life to a life following after him. And following after him means we're going to be disciples disciples who make disciples, multiplication. It's the X factor. Let me read to you again, Matthew chapter 28. Matthew chapter 28. Remember now, Genesis 1 says, be fruitful and multiply. Fast forward all the way to the New Testament, Matthew 28. Jesus has died, buried, resurrected, appearing to his disciples. And on one of the occasions he appears to the disciples, he says to them, this is like one of the last verses in Matthew, in the book of Matthew. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have 
commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Can you just imagine this? Can you imagine Jesus showing up and looking at you with your group of friends? And he says, listen, therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. Go take it to the world. Take it to the baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Can you imagine this? Like this was the locker room talk. This was the locker room talk right before the big game. I could just imagine it. The disciples, the adrenaline's pumping. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're going to go make disciples. I'm ready. Jesus, we've spent three years with you. We're ready for this. We've been training for this moment. Come on. I'm ready for this thing. And they're all getting pumped up, you know, the, the, the sports match. They're all, you know, bumping each other's chest and, you know, beating each other's chest like gorillas. And it's just crazy. It's the locker room speech. The adrenaline's beating. It's pumping through their veins. They're ready to go. They're ready to go. Go make disciples of all nations. But then, but then, fast forward, Acts chapter 1. On another occasion that Jesus meets the disciples, he appears to them. In Acts chapter 1, he says this. Now, keep in focus just just for a second. He just told them, Matthew chapter 20, go make disciples. Do your thing. It's game time. Get ready. Get pumped up. And then he says this, on one occasion, Acts chapter 1, verse 4. On one occasion while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised. Oh, but Jesus, you just told us, go make disciples. What do you mean we're not supposed to leave? What do you mean we're supposed to wait? Ah, man, I was, I was suited up. I was ready to go. Go make disciples. No, no, no. But wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John, he baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. You were baptized with water, then you're going to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said, it is not for you to know the times or the dates the father has set by his own authority, but you will receive, listen to this, it's so good. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. Somebody type power in the chat room. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Oh, come on. He had just said, go make disciples. But then he says, wait, wait for the Holy Spirit. You're going to be baptized. You need to wait in Jerusalem. Can I tell you that Jesus knew that they would not be able to go make disciples if they did not wait for the power of the Holy Spirit. There is no go and make disciples without the power of the Holy Spirit. You can't have the go and make disciples. You can't have the multiplication. You can't have the produce fruit in your life without the Holy Spirit. Jesus knew that if they didn't have the Holy Spirit, they needed to wait, that they needed to wait for. If they went and tried to do it, they'd be doing it in their own strength. But they needed to wait for the power of the Holy Spirit to come. They needed to wait to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. I don't know what your experience with the Holy Spirit has been. I don't know I don't know if you've been through a charismatic church, if you've been through a very traditional church like me growing up where all you heard about well, when the, you talked about the Holy Spirit was when you said I believe in the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit and that was the only time the Holy Spirit was talked about. I don't know if you've never been to church and never heard about the Holy Spirit. But can I tell you that the Holy Spirit is the third person of the Trinity, Father, Son, the Holy Spirit. It's not an it, it's not a what, it is a he, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a person. Let me just introduce you to him right now. The Holy Spirit is a person. And the Holy Spirit is not weird. The Holy Spirit is not the the hippie version of God, not weird. No, no, no. Listen to me. There's weird Christians out there. There's weird people out there. But listen, they were weird before they ever gave their life to Jesus. The Holy Spirit is the third person of the Trinity. And we need the Holy Spirit. Just like, listen, if the disciples needed the Holy Spirit, before they went to make disciples, we need the Holy Spirit. If the disciples needed to wait for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, they've been baptized in water, but if they needed to wait for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, 
In order to go make disciples, we need the baptism of the Holy Spirit in our life if we're going to produce, if we're going to produce. The Holy Spirit, let me tell you this, is the X factor I'm talking about today. The Holy Spirit is the X factor that I am talking about. It, we, we have the what we're going to do. We're going to go make disciples. We're going to make disciples. We're going to pour into people. We're going to produce fruit. We're not just going to grow ourselves. We're going to produce fruit. We're going to make disciples. We have the what we're going to do. Now we need the how we're going to do it, the tool to accomplish it, and that's the person, the third person of the Trinity called the Holy Spirit. It is the X factor. It is the X factor in our life. My question to you is, are you going to, are you going to walk the rest of your Christian life out? Are you going to try to produce fruit? Are you going to try to make disciples in your own strength? Or are you going to do exactly what Jesus said, wait for the baptism of the Holy Spirit to come? And the good news is, is you don't have to wait like the disciples did. The, the, the Holy Spirit, you can access him right now. You can say, baptize me in your Holy Spirit right now. I receive you, Holy Spirit. We don't have to wait. Here's, if you want my sermon right now, here's the sermon in a sentence. The Holy Spirit, watch this. The Holy Spirit is the promised power. Remember it said, wait for what my father promised. The Holy Spirit is the promised power you need to accomplish your purpose to produce. The Holy Spirit is the promised power. Listen, God promised it to you. Why would you not why would you not take him up on his promise? Why would you sit outside of the promised land, just like the Israelites? They, they, what if they just, uh, we're going into the promised land, Joshua. And they're like, no, I think I, I think I like the desert better. I think I like the wilderness better. No, you would step into the promise. Listen, God has created a promise for you called the Holy Spirit. And if we're believers who don't receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, we're just like believers sitting in the wilderness. We're just like the Israelites sitting in the wilderness. It is the promised promise power you need to accomplish your purpose on your life to produce fruit for him. Listen, how, how am I supposed to make disciples, Daniel? How am I supposed to make disciples? The Holy Spirit. How am I supposed to make a difference in this world? The Holy Spirit. How am I, how am I supposed to be a better spouse? You need the Holy Spirit. How am I supposed to be a better parent? You need the Holy Spirit in your life. How, how am I supposed to live pure as a single person? Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. I, I, I love it. We need the Holy Spirit to produce something in our life. Watch what Galatians 5 says. Galatians 5.22 says, But the fruit of the Spirit. What are we talking about? We're talking about producing fruit for God, aren't we? The fruit. What, do you, what is the fruit? It's the fruit of the Spirit. Listen, it's not the fruit of your hard work. Oh, this is, this is going to free somebody today. Come on. This is not, it is not the fruit of your hard work. It is not the fruit of your righteousness. It is not even the fruit of your salvation. It is the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control somebody against such things. There is no law. Listen, your, your good works can't produce these fruits in your life. You need the spirit because it's not the fruit of your hard work. It's the, not the fruit of your labor. It's the fruit of the spirit. God, give me patience. Have you ever prayed to God for patience and it gives you a hard situation that you can't be patient in? God, give me patience. You know what he's saying, I believe? I've given you the Holy Spirit. I've given you the Holy Spirit, and guess what the fruit of the Spirit is? Patience. God, would you just help me love them? They're so hard to love. Help me love them. I've given you the Holy Spirit. I've given you the Holy Spirit. God, I need joy in my life. I'm going through a tough time. I need more joy in my life. Give me joy. I've given you the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was given so that you would produce fruit so that you would produce fruit. Love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Does anybody want some of that? Come on, somebody put in a fruit emoji. Put a fruit emoji in the, in the chat room. Some grapes or orange or something. Come on, we need to bear the fruit of the Spirit. 
in our life. Come on, it is the same spirit. Why wouldn't you want it? The same spirit who rose Christ from the dead lives in me. You better believe I'm gonna produce fruit. You better believe something's coming out of my life, not out of my own works, not out of my own strength, but out of the strength of the spirit of God in me. Come on, the power to produce fruit. And come on, the X factor, the Holy Spirit in your life will also propel you forward in your future, in your calling. It will propel. I can't, I, can, I just, can I just be transparent? I was in my room listening to worship music when I prayed for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I said, God, I pray for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Fill me up. God, if it's more of you, I want it. Give me the gift of prophecy. Give me the gift of tongues. Give me the gift of discernment, the gift of wisdom and knowledge. God, thank, thank you for all these gifts. You're a good father. You give good gifts to give it to. And I just remember in, the, in my room, something shifted in my life that night when I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. When I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, something shifted in my life. Can I tell you, I, I tell people it was like putting rocket boosters on my purpose and my calling and God lit it. And all of a sudden I was, I, I look back now, I'm like, man, I, I'm here so fast. Why? Because it was the X factor. It was the Holy Spirit in my life. Just look at Peter's life. Peter was an example. Peter had just denied Jesus three times, one of them to a little girl. Oh, you knew Jesus. Jesus was going to the cross. Oh, did, weren't you one of his disciples? Didn't you follow him? No, 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 I didn't. I didn't. He was ashamed. He was afraid. He was afraid of that. He, 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 was, he was the one that Jesus looked at and said, get behind me, Satan. Yeah, that Peter. It was the Peter that stepped out of the boat and we commend him for that. That was really great. But then all of a sudden he took his eyes off Jesus and he began to sink. That Peter, that Peter, after he was baptized in the Holy Spirit, Read Acts chapter 2. Peter was one of the disciples who was baptized in the Spirit. The Bible says that he got up and he preached boldly. That doesn't sound like the same Peter who just denied Jesus in front of a girl. He preached boldly to the same people who crucified Jesus. He preached boldly. And the Bible says 3,000 were added to their number that day. Peter preached boldly. Why? Because he had the X factor. Because he waited for the baptism of the Holy Spirit in his life. He preached boldly. Yeah, man, can I tell you the Holy Spirit gives you boldness in the face of fear? When you're in a fearful situation, boldness in the face of fear, encouragement in the face of doubt. When, you're, when you want to doubt life, when you want to doubt your existence, when you want to doubt if you can make it, when you wanna, if you want to doubt you can't, you're never going to accomplish your dreams, it get, the Holy Spirit encourages you. When you pray in the Spirit, you just get encouraged. You get filled up, full of faith, comfort in the face of pain. The Holy Spirit brings comfort. Did you know the Holy Spirit is a comforter? The Bible calls him the advocate. He's the advocate, which can translate to helper or comforter. He's your comforter. He's your comforter. He's your comforter. And can I also tell you one reason that Holy Spirit brings the X factor in your life is because he comes with gifts, gifts of the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians 12, 7 highlights the gifts of the Spirit. It says the Holy Spirit is given to each of us in a special way that it is for the good of all. To some people, the Spirit gives a message of wisdom. To others, the Spirit gives a message of knowledge. To others, the same Spirit gives faith. To others, one Spirit gives the gifts of healing. Come on, imagine praying for someone and watching them be healed. You need the Holy Spirit in your life. To others, He gives the power to do miracles. To others, He gives the ability to prophesy. The, the ability to literally speak on behalf of God into somebody's life, to encourage them, to build them up, to prophesy. To others, he gives the ability to, to tell the spirits apart, to discern spirits, discern spirits. To others, he gives the ability to speak in different kinds of languages or tongues. This is the one people get tripped up on all the time, tongues. They had, uh, they had not known before and all... And, and to still others, he gives the ability to explain what was said in those languages or tongues. All the gifts are produced, somebody say produced, by one and the same spirit. He gives gifts to each person just as he decides. Prophecy, faith, wisdom, knowledge, healing, discernment, 
tongues, interpretation of tongues. He, he gives these gifts. When, you, when you're baptized in the Holy Spirit, you get to operate in these gifts. But listen, the gifts are tools to help you produce. These are not gifts meant for your selfish desires. These are not gifts for you to distort and pervert. These are only given to you so that you can produce for his kingdom. They're given to you with the tool. The, the, the gifts, the tongues, prophecy, healings, that's not the main thing. The main thing is Jesus. The main thing is Jesus Christ alone. And can I tell you now that these are meant to help people on their journey discover God, discover Jesus, and be discipled in their journey. And be discipled in their journey. I just want you to know today before we close, it is available to you. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is available to you. And can I tell you, can I just be very clear, it is a separate experience from your salvation. When you gave your life to Jesus, you were filled with the Spirit. But the baptism of the Holy Spirit is submerged. The baptismo means to be submerged. I don't know about you. I don't want to just be filled, but I want to be submerged with the Spirit. In fact, go, go home. There's a little homework for you. I know you don't like that word, but Acts chapter 8. Read Acts chapter 8, verse 15 through 16. It's a, it, it, and, and then also Acts chapter 19, 1 through 2. This is both... Um, Pete, Paul is talking to the to the to some people who just believed in Acts chapter 19 anyways he's talking to some people who just believed in Jesus salvation moment and he said did you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit when you believed well he wouldn't have asked that question if you received the baptism of the Holy Spirit when you give your life to Jesus because it's a separate experience. They said, no, we haven't heard of the Holy Spirit and then he laid his hands on them and he prayed for them to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Can I just tell you that is, this is a gift that God has promised? Not receiving the baptism and the fullness God has for you would be like walking down Christmas morning with gifts with your name on it and walking back upstairs and never opening them. God has given you gifts. God has promised you something. And sometimes we can't see, we, we get afraid of the Holy Spirit, we get afraid of the gifts of Holy Spirit like tongues and things like that. The Holy Spirit is a gentleman. He's not here to control you. But can I tell you, a lot of times we get afraid of what we don't understand. The present, you can't see what's inside, so maybe you get afraid of it. But can I tell you, when God gives it, it's good, and it's available to you. It's available to you. And I want you, I want you to know today, I want to pray for you in just a moment, but I'm coming out with a devotion um, called Empowered, a seven-day devotion, video devotional, that will help you and we're going to talk more about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That's what it's all about. Because my heart and desire for you is the church of Jesus Christ to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. That is one of my, I feel like that's one of my purposes. That's one of my callings to see the church of Jesus Christ and to see you personally, the people that I pastor, to be empowered by the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Not just live your Christian life of having raised your hand and living in salvation, which is amazing. That's, that, that, that is the key moment, Christ alone. I, th that's it. But there's another experience called the baptism of the Holy Spirit that will empower you to lead other people to Jesus and will empower you to walk people into discipleship. Whether you're a, whether you're a CEO, whether you're a mom, whether you're a student, God wants you to make disciples who make disciples and you need the X factor in your life, the promised Holy Spirit. If that's you and you want to be baptized with the Holy Spirit, pray this prayer. Put your hand over your heart. Pray this with me. Father, I thank you that you sent your son Jesus to restore a relationship with me. And I thank you that Jesus said that one is greater is coming. It's the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, would you baptize me like you did with the disciples in Acts chapter two? Would you fill me to overflowing I receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. God, I pray for all the gifts, not for my selfish desires, but so that I could produce fruit for your kingdom. Fill me up, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, thank you so much for watching. I hope you were encouraged and blessed. Why don't you subscribe to this channel so you don't miss a single video? I'd also love for you to share this video with somebody else, and hopefully they will be encouraged and blessed just as you have been. You can also join us every Sunday during our live church services. Hope 
to see you there.